NAC is one of the most popular supplements out there as it's a very cost effective way of indirectly boosting glutathione levels by providing cysteine, the rate limiting precursor. But doing long term high doses of NAC can contribute over time to sulfur overload and that can drive up inflammatory markers and especially if you take into account if you've got a high sulfur diet so having lots of eggs garlic, uh, even collagen, and then you've got supplements like MSN, otherwise known as methyl sulfony methane. And that's why I'm a big fan of injectable glutathione. And by doing a low dose, I can do it subcutaneously in cycles, and it's pretty much pain-free as opposed to doing intramuscular, and it's cost-effective as well. First, I'm gonna go over the benefits of glutathione, and then I'll go into biomarkers to watch out for, for both glutathione deficiency as well as sulfur overload. First and foremost, it's known for detoxification, binding to heavy metals like mercury and lead, and it conjugates with uh, environmental toxins, drug metabolites, purging about the body. So it's critical for phase two liver detox enzymes. And you may well have heard it being called the master antioxidant regulator, regenerating vitamins like E and C, and it also prevents lipid peroxidation. And if you don't know, humans, we're actually outliers. Our metabolic rate on average, we should probably live around, I think it's 27 years, but because we have low lipid peroxidation, that's why it's much, much more than that. Breaking it down further, it can prevent DNA damage and uh, it works with glutathione peroxidase in neutralizing hydrogen peroxide. And if you don't know, when that builds up in your scalp, that can uh, accelerate gray hair. So there's obviously, there's a link with glutathione deficiency and gray hair over time. Then of course you've got mitochondrial protection, preventing oxidative stress in the mitochondria, key for longevity and energy. And glutathione depletion is very much associated with uh, apoptosis of mitochondria, mitochondrial death. Another reason to supplement for glutathione is intense exercise depletes your glutathione. You know, obviously endurance training or strength training. And I've seen this where people they, uh, they're very athletic, but they have lower than expected uh, glutathione biomarkers. And they might have a clean lifestyle on top of this, so they live in a low pollution area, clean diet, they don't smoke or drink, because that all depletes your glutathione, but the intense exercise is driving down their stores of it. Glutathione has many skin health boosting properties, but uh, it's widely used in Asia as a skin brightening tool, the injectable form, as it uh, can prevent melanogenesis, so obviously that melanin in the skin. Glutathione just seems to be an all-rounder for longevity. When you look at centenarians and their intracellular glutathione levels, you compare them to their age match peers, they tend to have higher levels of it. And in animal studies too, boosting glutathione levels seems to improve metabolic health and extend lifespan. And chronically low levels of glutathione is linked to nearly every aging uh, pathway known, you know, inflammation, neurodegeneration, immune function, uh, insulin resistance, and of course, mitochondria as well. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. So by fixing your glutathione level, you can hit multiple targets at the same time. And that leads me onto biomarkers. So obviously glutathione peroxidase, that's one I'm monitoring now with True Health. And there's uh, amino acids too that indicate, so if you're uh, overloading yourself with sulfur, you've got like methionine, taurine. Then of course you've got cysteine, which can indicate sulfur overload if that's too high. Another one is cystatothionine and uh, S-methylmethionine. So if they're out of whack, then uh, if multiple ones are, then that can also indicate uh, poor methyl donor conversion as well as uh, sulfur overload. Then you've got biomarkers of oxidative stress like myeloperoxidase and that can deplete glutathione stores. And moving on to biological age on uh, the omic age, out of the 36 biomarkers, there's one that's strongly aligned with uh, glutathione depletion and that's N-acetylisoputreonine. And obviously yeah, I've seen that uh, that's, that's gone up for me in the past. I'm just awaiting my current results, but that's one I'm following closely as well. And then moving on to more traditional testing, you've got uh, homocysteine. So that can be a sign of uh, you know, uh, poor methyl donor availability if that gets elevated and it just indicates uh, yeah, inflammation. And uh, it can be, it can go up for various different things like, you know, being deficient in 
B12, folate, B6, and um, it's, uh, it's closely aligned with uh, the MTHFR gene, so poor methylation. But homocysteine can also spike if transsulfuration bottlenecks, i.e. having a sulfur excess. And this is something I'm monitoring. I do my homocysteine once a year, but in between that, looking on my symphony age, my brain age, that takes into account uh, homocysteine as well and I've seen my brain age actually going up a bit and BDNF is another factor in there and that has I believe that's coming down because I've been doing so much to support BDNF I did a, a cycle of cerebralizing also pinealon I've been uh, improving my cardio these are things that are all powerful for supporting brain derived neurotrophic factor and moving away from bar markers just day by day if you notice bloating from having a NAC or even MSM, that other supplement I mentioned that also uh, helps with detoxification, supports your joints like collagen. And uh, so if you get bloating, you know, like um, gassy, like flatulence, that kind of thing, um, you can even smell sulfur overload in your urine potentially. So that, that moves me on to my cycle of it, of doing injectable glutathione. The reason why I've I still do it every quarter is because I do a high dose of NAC at two grams a day, five days a week. And I'm able to do that because I mix it into a drink. And that, that is quite a lot of NAC if you're doing that all year round. And then if you're doing MSM on top of that, or maybe if you're taking other things like sulfurophane, or you have a lot of cruciferous vegetables in your food, like tender stem broccoli that, that has it in. And so the, the, when you're combining that all together, that's a lot of sulfur in your diet so um, what I've done is I've I only do the NAC once a week while I'm doing the injectable glutathione at just two grams and then I've cut down on my MSN dose it was fairly moderate at 1.6 grams a day again five days a week but uh, doing it spread over like morning and evening so 800 milligrams and now I've cut down my MSN down to just 800 milligrams doing that in the morning post exercise and then doing the NAC in the evening. And both with NAC and injectable glutathione, I like to do it more on weekdays because those are my days that I'm in the gym training, so it can help combat oxidative stress, but also it can help with glutamate metabolism, you know, that excitatory neurotransmitter, therefore driving up the calming neurotransmitter GABA. And yes, NAC isn't the best tasting supplement because I mix it with other things that don't taste that good in that same evening drink. It doesn't make that much of a difference. I take trimethylglycine, again, that can help with homocysteine. Um, spirulina again these don't taste that good so if you just knock it back in one drink it's a very cost effective way of getting cheap supplements and getting back onto injectable glutathione the one I get it comes in a 600 milligram vial and at the moment I'm just doing a fairly light course over five weeks of uh, 60 milligrams twice a week so uh, yeah and then I will review my levels of glutathione like the peroxidase as well as oxidative stress markers and just see where things lie with that I can adjust the dose I have done it more intensively in the past but it's just it works out it's, at the moment it's a very cheap uh, supplement stack I have for glutathione if I'm getting uh, the NAC getting as much as I can from the precursors from that even have a little bit of glycine from having uh, my collagen, I have it morning and evening, or averaging around 15 grams a day. So time will tell with bar markers if I've got the dose correct. Obviously lifestyle factors come into play as well. My, my lifestyle seems to be pretty stable, but say, you know, if you're someone who get, works with, um, I don't know, I've seen it with people who work in removals and they get exposed to mold, and then, uh, you, then you may need a more intense course of glutathione because you've got uh, that mold exposure. It's all about tailing it to your lifestyle to avoid wasting your money and getting unintended consequences. So the glutathione I get is from Swiss Chems. I've been using them for like two and a half years now. Never had any issues with uh, the quality of the products. I even did my independent testing on uh, Epitalon. And yeah, getting it into the UK, I've not had any issues. It's never been stopped by customs as well. If you've got any feedback with using glutathione, then please do comment down below. I'm always interested to hear. And I do try and respond when I've got time. So if you like that video, then check out this one on uh, Epitalon, that peptide I mentioned earlier that has lots of different longevity pathways, it boosts melatonin production, and it's one of the cheapest peptides out there if dosed correctly. Thanks for watching, see you next time.